Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Game Axe Diamond. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so recently a bit, I've had a little bit of the uh, the man flu, but what better to get you back up to work and in front of the PC stuff than a really low cost PC chassis. Now this is from Game Max, uh, kindly this was sent over to us. Actually one of our Discord users, uh, Ghost Adder, asked a couple of questions about it and I'd never seen it before actually, so we reached out to Game Max and kindly they sent this one over for review, so let's take a look at it and let's see what it's all about. So first of all, as you can see, this is the white version. So the Game Max Diamond is available in two colours. There's a matte black and also this kind of matte white finish. Uh, I actually really like the white finish. It's a little bit different. It looks really good. The front panel has got this kind of diamond pattern, which I guess is where it gets its name from. But this whole front panel is actually quite a, a new look. We haven't got an entire mesh. We haven't got it completely choked off and it's not completely flat and boring. There's a little bit of interest going on here, which I kind of like and especially with the RGB strip which is built in, which you can see flowing down through here, gives off a really nice little bit of shade to contrast against the black or the white. I really like this. Now also as you can see on the side we've got tempered glass, there's 3mm tempered glass on there, and also you can see at the rear you also get an included RGB or addressable RGB fan, all included in the price. Now talking of the price, this is really, really cheap. Now this at the moment in the UK you can pick up for less than £40, which I think is absolutely phenomenal value for money, and may well actually take the crown for the best value for money case that I know of. So let's talk about some of the cooling features of this case. So first of all, working from the top, we've got space at the top for radiators up to 280 mil or two 140mm fans, two 120s, all those kinds of things. Also, you've got this nice meshed magnetic dust filter, which we're pretty used to seeing, but on a case of this kind of price, maybe not all the time. The fan mountings are slightly offset as well, so if you've got a motherboard in there with slightly high VRMs or cooling or RAM or whatever it is in the way, there's a little bit of an offset so you can hopefully still get to your connectors at the top. Moving on to the front, now this entire front section is removable and in this place you can put 360 mils worth of fans, so that's three 120s, or you can go for two 280s, two 40s, 120s, whatever you choose to do, but if you want to you can put a 320 mil radiator in there and fans and still have plenty of wiggle room. Moving around to the inside on the PSU shroud, there's also two additional mounting points for 120 mil fans, so you can actually have up to eight fans in here if you include the one at the back already. So cooling is not gonna be a problem with this. And again, you've got this mesh inlet on the front as well, which is slightly, comes out from the front, so it gives you a little bit of airflow at the bottom. There is actually a grab handle at the bottom as well, which does actually allow some unfiltered air in, but I think at this price point we can forgive that a little bit. So I've disconnected the power now so we can take a look inside. And we've got these quite nice large thumb screws on the side panel. And the side panel looks at three mil temper glass. So some of the cost savings have come through that. Three mil is a little bit thinner than what you'd normally see. Most cases tend to be sort of three or five, so it's a little bit thinner but it is a very nice, kind of very light smoke finish to it, so it's not completely clear, so it will be uh, slightly forgiving on certain setups. Now moving in further, as you can see from the front here, we've got this nice big cutout section for your fans, and there's no mesh or anything or any framework to get in the way, so nothing to restrict the airflow there. You can also see on the inside there is a deflector shield, which helps deflect the LED light towards the outside rather than let it come inside. Personally, I think I'll probably, when I do a build in this, I'll take that deflector shield off to allow some of the RGB lighting to come in and illuminate the, uh, the build inside. But okay, if you want to see how that goes, you can click on subscribe and the chime icon and you'll be notified when all the future video releases come out and hopefully it'll be a build in one of these. So moving along to the basement area, we've got this nice Game Max logo and all of this is finished in a really nice kind of satin matte black. You've got the cutout there so you can see the power supply which is in there. Um, personally, I would have probably rather them saved a little bit of money on machining and left that intact and that way you could also put a uh, slightly non-branded power supply in there if you need to. Above this, we've got this nice hexagonal mesh. Again, you can put two fans on there, so something like this. This is one of the new Game Max Razor fans, so if you wanted to, you can man a couple of fans on there. No problems at all, and that will pull some of the air. This coming in from the 360mm bottom fan, and then push it back up into your graphics card. So if you've got maybe a slightly older graphics card, which generates a lot of heat, a couple of extra fans in this area, blowing uh, some cool air up, could be really helpful. So motherboard-wise, in this we can put in a full-size ATX, micro-ATX, or ITX if you seal the need. Uh, really is designed for ATX. That would look best in there, in my opinion. 
and you can get quite a wide board in there because this is all flat at the back so motherboard size you shouldn't have any problems with. Extended ATX isn't officially recognised as being fitting in there but I don't see any reason why you shouldn't be able to get it in there if you wanted to with a little bit of uh, DIY know-how. The back plate is really nicely cut out so you've got a really nice section in there to get access to your cooler and all those kinds of things, back fittings if you're going through a custom cooling setup. You can put a cooler in here of up to 170 mils, so that gives you a lot of options on what you can put in there, tower coolers, those kinds of things. Also for cable management, there's plenty of cutouts, so we've got three cutouts at the basement section, there's three along the top section, one in the standard kind of ATX power supply side, one at the top here which is ideal for fans and that kind of thing, and there's one at the front, so if you want to pass through any connectors you can do there quite nicely. This section here at the front is uh, slightly redundant. There's not really a great deal you can do with it. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any obvious mounting points for hard drives or anything like that. And because this case is actually quite a shallow case, there's not a great deal of room there. I personally quite like shallow cases because I don't really like to have all this area here. In fact, I would rather have it slightly more squat to try and reduce some of this extra area at the front. Uh, maybe case manufacturers will do that in future. So moving around to the rear, we've got a pretty standard setup. So you've got your cutout for your motherboard. You've also got your mounting area for a 120mm fan. 120mm is the largest you can go in there. There is a little bit of room up and down for adjustment, but 120 is the largest fan that you can get in there. You've got seven slots here for a PCI Express expansion. These are all the captive slots, unfortunately, the ones you have to wiggle out. But again, money has been saved on this. This is a very, very cost-effective case. So you do expect kind of things like that at this price point. Again, a similar thing. The adjustment on this back plate is with a standard screw rather than a thumb screw. Again, it's not the end of the world, but you can see where certain places they've chosen to cut costs. Moving to the bottom, we've got space in here for a up to 200 mil power supply. Uh, standard ATX size, no problem. You can use an SFX if you feel you need to, uh, but standard ATX is absolutely fine. Moving around to the bottom of the case, and you can see we've got a removable dust filter for the power supply, and you've also got a couple of thumb screws there to remove the included hard drive cage, which we'll take a look at in a little minute. There are also rubberized feet as well, which raise the case about an inch off the ground, allowing some airflow underneath here if you need to, and the rubberized feet will reduce vibrations. So moving around to the rear, as you can see, this is our power supply basement area. There's also a hard drive removable caddy in there. You can put a three and a half inch drive in there, and also a two and a half inch drive on top of the caddy, or you can remove it entirely if you wanted to. As you can see, I've just stuffed all the wires in here just to get it up and running, but there's plenty of room in there for cable management. Um, these are the main wires which come through from the front IO, which are all really nicely completely blacked out. Um, connectivity wise, you've, you've got HD audio, you've got your reset, power switch, all those kinds of things, hard drive LED. You've also got USB 3.0, which is Gem 1. You've got another one for your USB 2.0. And there is another cable which comes along which is for the addressable RGB. So you can use that as a pass through and connect up into the fan on the rear. You can actually daisy chain these if you want to. So if you, again, if you wanted to use something like the new Razer fans from GameMax, these have got a RGB pass through. So you can plug in one side, pass through to the other, and you can daisy chain these. So if you wanted to fill the whole thing with eight fans, you can do relatively easily. Although it's not gonna be that cheap. The front RGB is actually powered by a SATA connection, which I just plugged into the power supply. So no Molex on here, which is a good thing to see. Uh, talking of the IO on the front, on the IO you have got a LED change color button. You've got your headset, microphone jacks there, a single USB 2.0, a single USB 3.0, and you've got a nice clicky power button. So overall, a really nice case. Uh, for the money, I don't think you can go too far wrong. For less than 40 pounds here in the UK, I think this is fantastic value for money. You've got plenty of cooling options, full-size motherboard capacity on there, built-in addressable RGB. You've even got the included fan in there as well, which you can add to if you wish to. But yeah, I think this is a really nice little case. Perfect for those kind of more cost-conscious builds, all that sort of thing. Or if you just like the look of the front of it, the, uh, the front panel, the diamond panel, actually is, uh, is quite an unusual look and uh, maybe just a thing for some people. Although some people probably get very triggered by it. But if you do get triggered by it, let us know in the comments. Now, I'm going to leave you now with some cutaways of the RGB connections and also the RGB lighting effects so you can see what they look like. But in the meantime, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.